Okay, I'm going to interject and say something. <laughs> One of the things about spoken word is you can never really, uh, I don't think, you should ever come up with what you're going to read until you get to the space because I think with this art form especially, so much comes from the audience and I don't know if an audience often realizes how much of the convert, it's like spoken word is a conversation and, and the audience is so much, you know, part of that. It's like almost pulling the poem out of you. And so um, you can imagine like a lot of these poems I read over and over and over, so to read them without, to read them sincerely sincerely and authentically is, uh, I always just have to make sure that I can do it each time I read a poem. And then it's particularly challenging if you've already said those words. So you need some sort of, I'm just thinking out loud or I'm processing out loud. Um, so you need something that will help you get back to an honest place. I think I have it. I'll just stop the poem if I don't. <laughs> okay, let's do it again from the top the second time I've done this tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wish I just had that on recording throughout my whole life, like, you know? <laughs> I was holding my heart in the palms of my nervous hands. My heart had 200 broken windows, glass covering the floor, an amazing light in almost every room. My heart was beating like a pillow fight. Feathers were flying everywhere. I couldn't stop crying for all those birds. I could not stop crying. I planted my heart in the raised bed in your bedroom. Pansies bloomed all night. You called me pretty and I didn't flinch. I knew I could still be your boyfriend and tell you my grandmother sold my prom dress stitch by stitch with her own hands. The finest suit could not have made me more proud. Our hearts beat so loud. The neighbors think we're fucking when I'm just trying to find the nerve to touch your face. You don't ask God how long this will last. I don't care about any of the words on the map besides you are here. You are here listening to me tell you I've been stung by a bee only twice in my life. Both times I was stung in the mouth. I still carry the stingers under my tongue so I never forget where honey comes from. Sweet, sweet siren. I imagine you ruining Oklahoma farm boys in the beds of their daddy's trucks. I want to take you to church, show you what I could do to your confession booth on a Saturday night. You already know how many love poems I have written to women who are not you. You already know every word was true. There was still a tandem bicycle in my garage. I know I will never have the heart to ride or sell. So I know you know I am not wondering why you kept your married name. I am here watching you do your laundry and I want to match your socks just so you can put them on and I can take them off, take everything off. Yes, I have a history of fainting. No, I wasn't lying when I told you I am going to be more difficult than anyone you have ever dated. <laughs> it has been years since my life was a picnic where I wasn't freaking out about the possible gluten allergies of the pigeons being fed bread in the park, but you will always feel safe in knowing I will never make a pinata of your heart. You will never have to lose yourself to win me over. Tell me you're a liar. I will say I already know. You are a master yogi when it comes to stretching the truth, but I'd be willing to bet we both have a history of downward dog and sometimes you gotta bend to keep seeing God. Isn't always clean as a whistle, but that train is something I can worship. If only because it keeps showing up, I am at your station. Saying if I were a painter, I would paint every billboard in the city bright white buy a projector and take you to a new drive-in movie every single night if I were an oven mitt. I would say never touch anything hot without me. Obviously, I am going to do stupid things. I once sold my saxophone to help pay for college. I once smashed the violin to bits on our second date when I said, so, your vagina it's really rad that babies have come out of it. <laughs> what I meant to say is holy shit, you've given birth, and I can't imagine anything sexier than a woman checking her children's homework. For the record, you are getting straight A's in chemistry class. For the record, I am flunking math. It has been too few days to add up to me saying yes. I am gonna permanently fuck up your lipstick, yes. I am gonna throw tantrums through your tidy heart, yes. I am gonna fall apart at your mother's dinner table over green beans and lentils and somebody's sensible doubt, yes. I am gonna run you a bath. That is to say, I am going to run into the rain over and over with an empty glass till you are soaking in the certainty that nothing falls in vain. Wherever we land, 
there will always be this day where I turn off that song of my sadness and your shame, where I stop asking what all the crying has been about. All I know is my name could rust entirely away in your perfect mouth.